Hello everyone. Welcome back to JD Bots. This is the bot series on enterprise chatbot. Today we'll be starting with the Lewis integration. We had already completed the proactive messaging. Lewis integration. Before starting the Lewis integration, we need to make sure that some of our flows some of our conversation use case are working fine so let us create a very simple use case and that will be time sheet for the employees the time tracker can be used to get the time in and time out of the employee right through the chatbot all right so let's start before that so since our video is based on the Lewis integration, let us go ahead and create our language service. You might have already know about the Lewis.ai. We'll not be using this Lewis.ai services. That is a language understanding. We'll be not be using this portal for our implementation. We'll be using language studio because Lewis language understanding functionality has been shifted to the language studio. It's not official, but the functionality is there in the language studio. And as you might have already know that Q and a maker has from, I think October, they will be stopped creating the Q and a maker services because they want us to go to the language studio and create the custom question and answering services. So same thing could happen for the Lewis as well. Right. So we'll be going to the language studio. This is the portal. It's a one stop solution for all of your cognitive services. Okay, so when you log in to your language studio for the first time, you need to choose your directory, your Azure subscription and the language resource. If you don't have any, you can either create a new language resource. So I'll be showcasing you either you can create it from here or you can create it from the Azure portal. So we'll be creating it from the Azure portal. I'll be just showcasing you because I already have a language resource that is created and Azure allows one free resource per subscription. So I don't want to incur any charges. So I'll be reusing my existing free resource. So I'll be showcasing you how you can create the language resource. You can either go here and create one. Let us go through the portal once language studio portal and then we'll I'll be showing you on the Azure portal right so this is a resource group name where you can add your language resource and what name would you like to give let's suppose I want to give enterprise language and I can choose a location and the pricing tier since I've already used the free one, it will not create. And that's all. You just confirm and acknowledge and then click on done. So this is how you create a language resource on the language studio portal. The same thing can be created from the my uh, Microsoft Azure portal. So we come here, search for the marketplace and search for the language service. This is the resource that we would like to create. And here are all the default features that are that comes with this language service. And you can also add the custom features. This is required for your QA maker. So now the name is custom question answering. And this one is custom text classification and custom name entity. Let's select them. 
okay so as you have seen on the language studio portal it is the same thing you select the subscription resource group region the name of the resource and the pricing tile and also azure search region you can choose and if you okay since we have selected that custom text classification either you can add a new storage account or you can create and select the existing one and that's all that is all about uh, creating the resource if you have not selected that custom entity then you will not be asked about selecting the storage okay yeah so on the language studio after you create your resource what you need to do just reload your page and your resource will be coming under here so i already have a resource i'll be just selecting that and click on done okay now so let's search for the project that we want to create since we are interested in language understanding service and that would be conversational language understanding i think this is the one yeah so this is the one so i'll open it and this is a similar user interface user experience you have seen on the lewis.ai portal it is the same user interface and i already have a project over here flight booking let me create a new project for our implementation for our chatbot and the name i will be giving is enterprise chatbot yeah uh, I don't want to enable multiple languages in project. I just want to make it English as my primary language and I want to make the chatbot in a single language. Okay. So that's all. Review and create. Yeah. So here we have the none intent like uh, in language understanding we have the concept called as intents and entities intents are what actions user wants to perform as you see in the top the definition is intents are tasks or actions the user wants to perform right and entities are the what exact information that can be extracted from the user's intent yeah so for example uh, just let's take an example of flight booking our intent will be book flight because user wants to perform the action of booking a flight okay and we have something called utterances utterances are the what user says in the chat window like how users ask the bot let's suppose for example i want to book a flight from mumbai to pune and that is a called utterance yeah and uh, let, let, let's um, do it live so that you will be better understanding book flight so this is my intent name here in this example you can see this utterance let me open again yeah see here so for example these utterance if i have a intent called book flight then i can have this utterances book me a flight to rio next week and this is again an utterance it's like how users interact with the bot using these utterances yeah okay so you need to extract few information from these utterances such as source destination and the date right for a flight booking we have a source we have a destination and what's the travel date so those things can be extracted from this utterances 
Okay, let's pick up this address. Book me a flight to Rio next week. Rio is my destination. Next week is my travel date. They did not provide the exact date, but yeah, you can ask the user if you had while processing our backend request, then we can just ask the exact date when in the next week. Yeah, so this is another one. Rio is my destination on the 24th. That means coming 24th, right? So these are the entities. Entities can be source is my entity, destination in my, is my entity, and travel date is my entity. This, so these are different types of entities we can have in an intent. And entities values are the one that is being provided by the user. So let, let us uh, go to our book flight and let's see how we can map our intents and entities. Okay. Uh, let me select book flight. I think yeah, the this user interface is little bit uh, changed. Now we have one place solution where we can label our utterances to the intent. I think this is a better solution instead of going to each intent and specifying the utterance. I think this one is better than our Lewis understanding, Lewis.ai portal. Okay, let's see. Uh, book me a flight from Mumbai to Pune on 26th September 2022 okay so this is my utterance right now okay let me just yeah okay yeah fine okay I got it let me skip all it, it is not allowing me to continue okay so book a flight from Mumbai Mumbai is my you need to map them so okay it is really difficult to map okay perfect now here i am mapping my data with the entity currently i don't have entity no entity is found what I can do, I can go to my entities portal where it is. Mm. Okay, let me just select again. Let's see how we can add entities over here and search for an entity. Okay, uh, source. Okay, so it creates right from here source location. So, source location is my Mumbai, is the value, and I'm going to create an entity. Okay, so source. Okay, source location is created. Perfect. On the right hand side, you can see the source location is created, but it is not currently mapped. I can create another entity. Let's do it right from here. Destination. And there are like three different types of entities you can create. Learned means it is learning from your data the list means if you provide a list of airports or locations then if the value the utterance the source or location map like value is present in that list that means it is part of that entity yeah and pre-built are few of the entities that are already created for you by Microsoft and you can reuse them and we also have a pre-built entity uh, called as geography and uh, date time is also a pre-built entity that is present okay so currently I'll be just selecting the destination as my machine learned entity okay okay what's the source location what's uh, cancel let me save my changes before moving to that source location okay so source location uh, what is the type of the entity that it has created 
I think it's quite a different uh, user experience for me because I have been using the Lewis.ai portal for most of my work. But yeah, this is a good experience. Okay, now the travel date. Okay, so date time, let's say date, uh, let's not uh, travel date. Okay, so I'll be selecting the pre built and let's add entity. Okay, so I don't have the option to add a pre built entity, quite strange. Okay, let's see. Okay, let me select uh, my source location. Okay, so we can highlight them. That's good. Let me reload because I made a mistake. Okay, so Mumbai is my source location. This is how you can map. Pune is my destination. And this is my travel date. Okay, so this is fine. This is one of the alterance. Okay, this is machine learned and it has not taken it as a pre-built entity that I had wanted. Let me add a new pre-built entity and select the date time. Okay. Perfect. Overlap methods are clickable and you can navigate between them by clicking OK when multiple components defined you can share some of the same tags when this is combining components. OK. Combine components do not combine components. OK, let's uh, make it do not combine components. I don't want to overlap things. Yeah, this is useful in some of the cases but not in our case as of now okay so these are my entities and this is my intent travel date travel date is learned and pre-built okay this is cool earlier we used to only have only one entity type now it has like multiple entity types that's good okay now since we have mapped this one if I go ahead and add a new utterance so it will try to map it automatically for me book flight from Paris to London I'll just add this utterance I have not added a date Okay, I think it requires, I think, multiple utterances in order to map automatically. So that's my source location. That's my destination. What I can do, let me just add a pre-built entity. Okay, let me save my changes. I'll add a pre-built entity and this should be geography let me search for location we don't have geography we don't have okay we don't have a pre-built entity okay that's fine okay so what we have in training set let's see We'll use this utterance to test the performance of your conversation model after creating your model. A separate set of utterances are used to train your model. Okay. Okay, training set and testing set. Okay. So now let's uh, train this model, quick model. Start training job. Okay, 
train a new model uh, overwrite an existing model and standard timing okay data splitting okay model name okay let's give today's date that is 9 no book flight model okay So after it has trained, then it will be able to map the entities automatically. So basically for each intent, you require minimum 25 to 30 utterances to make the model perfect. Else you will have some like conflicts between intents, right? So okay let's uh, use the testing set and let me just book a flight from chennai to delhi mm. does it not okay let me just add it here book a flight from Jaipur to Bengaluru no it is not able to recognize and auto map them okay because in Louis.ai portal we had an option of auto mapping basically it will not confirm the auto mapping but it will show you a suggestion that okay is this suggestion correct but here i don't find that feature available but that's all right i hope you understood and um, let me test this out so model performance i guess this is my no this is not the testing place testing deployments Hmm. how to test even i'm not sure okay i think we can test it uh, through the code but yeah this is the just a basic introduction of uh, the Lewis portal okay so we will not be creating this type of what we say because this is not our use case what we are looking for is to create the first use case that is the time tracker and that we'll be implementing first in our chatbot okay okay so let's start before starting let us delete few of the things that are not required one of them is add to do dialogue let's delete that <coughs> delete to do dialogue <coughs> then get user profile let's see what else we have inside this one user profile name okay so it just gets the user profile okay uh, we can delete this one as well okay view to do dialog also we can delete okay so now what okay we have few errors over here let us see okay let me just comment this out so that we have a reference of this in our later implementation 
how we can achieve it okay so others i can delete okay um, any other place i have the exceptions okay here it is i can keep one and delete others so that i can reference it for the other dialogues next okay these are the uh, breakpoints that's all right okay now let me what do we have in the common do we have a class file no okay let me just uh, build this project and see okay build is succeeded then we are good to go now let me create a new folder employee time tracker okay now we need to play, create a class file time tracker dialog okay so this should point extend to mm, we don't have cancel and help dialog right let's make it component dialog basically oh, we can reuse few of the things that is all the dialogues methods from this component dialog so let me show you what else we have here we will be reusing hmm, begin dialog that's part of the, our waterfall dialog then we'll be reusing this continue dialog again it's part of waterfall dialog yeah so this is why we have to make use of component dialog okay if we have a okay let's uh, not think about cancel and help dialog that we'll do later but for now let us go to our root dialog and in root dialog in the beginning we have to show something to the user right we are already showing something and that is present here in common.lg and these are the items that we are showing to the user and one good news uh, let me just uh, pop up that since we are building this for the Microsoft Teams channel we have the suggested actions for it i was looking at few of the samples and i found this and i have to search it again okay let let me just do a quick search okay this is a piece of code that send a suggested action let's use this piece of code and let's see okay creates and sends an activity with suggested actions to the user when the user clicks one of the buttons the text value from the card action will be displayed in the channel let us also copy the code description and go to our code so we will be going to the root dialog and we'll be going to the method that is sending the welcome card
okay so yeah this is the one so let me just remove this piece of code and add a new list of dialogues and the my action is send welcome card let me create a method okay perfect so this has to be private async and this should be dc and this should be options and let me wait a second okay let us go to our portal and let me copy this piece of code okay so now the f the list of actions so what okay hi how can i help you with today what can i help you with today okay and here we need to give the user's name so that yeah to give a better interaction with the user and we already have a method that gets me that and the method is get teams user details this is the method okay now let us call that method okay now we can make use of this team member dot given name perfect yeah so we will be giving few options the first option that we'll be providing is time tracker and value time tracker okay so this is the value that will be returned in the backend and this is the value that i'll be catching okay and in this case i'll be making use of rejects recognizer okay so let's not use records rejects for now let's stick to time tracker and the second implementation that we'll be doing it is for leaves and the third is for mm, profile
this is just for the time being i have added we will be changing from time to time but this is the first implementation that we will be performing time tracker okay okay uh, coming to this dc dot context dot activity from id okay after we have sent the card we need to continue the conversation and for continuing the conversation return await dc dot continue dialog okay perfect we are ready to test this implementation yeah okay before that we have few issues here okay we don't have any issues let us run In the meantime, let me also go to our Azure bot and change the application password. And I need to make sure that my ngrock is running. And also let me launch our team's channel. Okay, perfect. Let's say hi to the bot. And also let me check whether we are receiving the endpoint request. Yes, we are receiving. Okay, so it did not show me the welcome message. How about showing the welcome message when the user types home or help for that reason we will be making use of our intents and since we don't have the pre-built intent it was actually present let me see uh, let me do a quick check if I'm on the right place. Okay, for time being, let for because I need to get better understanding of the language studio for the Lewis services. For the time being, let's quickly create a pre built intent for this start over and home button. One thing is if you create your model here, you can always export it to the language service.
okay let me just quickly create the application okay yeah so here is the one pre-built intent domain and i'll be searching for start over yeah so this gives me ability to start my conversation from the beginning i just have two types restart start over and let me also add few more things help home mm, yeah i think these are the two main i need to add let me train my model So after my I train my model, this gives me the scoring criteria. Basically, it gives me the score of each of my utterance, and I can just uh, publish it. Uh, let me do it on the production slot. I believe we also have an entity with that name but I am not sure let us confirm that we have cancel we have greeting okay greeting let us see what we have in greeting help root dialog and let me go to our dot lg file help root dialog welcome prefix i am the sample bot and it again sends the welcome actions okay okay yeah so uh, yeah we do not need that for now okay mm, yeah uh, did we publish I think we published it I can get my details from manage and this is my app ID I can copy and paste it in my app settings for JSON We don't have all of them, we just have the root dialog. Okay, I need to add the prediction resource. That will be used to basically actually query my request. One is authoring resource and one is the prediction resource. Even authoring resources are also used for the prediction purpose, but at some point. You can see on the top. Lewis uses two types of resources authoring and prediction the authoring key is needed for authoring publishing and managing and authoring resource is created for you when you create azure cognitive service yeah okay so let me copy my primary key and also copy the host name I think this is my host name let's copy
Okay. Okay, let's see. I'm going to check my Lewis recognizer if I have made the changes correct. Okay, so here in this case, I'm going to uncomment this one and go to the Lewis recognizer. Right. And here I need. Okay, that is the application ID. Let me add it. Where is my app settings? And let me also copy the application ID that is present over here. Right. And going back to the root dialog. Okay. API key is added. Endpoint is added. Okay. Perfect. We are good to go. And before that, I need to add a intent in my trigger so that my utilities dot start over will be hit. And let me add it over here. Mm, not there. Let me add it here. You need to make sure that the intent name that you add in the source code is same as you have added in the Lewis portal. Okay. And this will also perform the same operation that the welcome card does because we need to show the welcome card again right okay let's run our application and let's see in action okay it's already listening to my web port Let's say hi to the bot. Home. Okay. It is sending me home because we have enabled the on message activity that we need to disable let us disable this one mm, let me also mute okay Now I'll not be receiving the reply for my hi. Yeah, I'll not be receiving the reply, but for home, I should get the reply. No. Okay, let's see what's the issue. Okay, I have got the issue. The issue was it should not be dot because when it comes to the coding part it has to be underscore right because that is why if it is dot we will not be able to check the scoring over here right it's a condition it's adaptive templating language so so if you have a dot on your intent 
that means it has to be a underscore in your source code okay so this is the one what i have done i have just uh, i am just checking a condition if my start over utility start over dot score is greater than 0.9 or not if it is greater than 0.9 then only i'll have to show the welcome card okay uh, in the meantime let me remove this right and let me run this. let me just uh, make it 0.96 yeah okay so i'll go to my teams bot and i'll just say hi okay it did not reply because my scoring criteria is 0 0.96 and let me say home no yes i got it so here you see hi jagdish what can i help you with today and these are the three options that it is giving me i can select one of the option and when i click on that the moment I click that buttons are gone that is the power of suggested actions okay currently it is nothing doing I am just uh, displaying as it is I can just start over and I can also just click on some other button yeah perfect in the next part we will go ahead and implement it further by combining it with Louis and create some wonderful dialogues. Thank you all.